Welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and like everything I do I messed up. Basically my crusader armies are weakened to the point of I can't fight anything anymore and I'm not going to make that mistake because my units aren't strong enough. The hell knights only have nine hell knight units and I can't recruit any more people so I gotta wait until they come back. Even though I have the money. I have the money to recruit them. I just can't. So I'm going to wait. Patiently. I'm just going to move along with the main party. And we're going to fight. I already cleared out everything over here. So I'm just going to go and wait. So we're going to this inconspicuous camp. Hopefully it's not too bad. It should be alright because we're alpha squad. But we'll see what happens. Okay, we found a Chinooki, whatever that is. I'm kind of remembering what a Chinooki... Oh, that's his name. I thought it was a type of animal. It's not Chinooki, it's a Kranook. I was, I think I was thinking some Japanese type thing. I, I watched too much anime, but that's okay. The aged kobold sitting by the small campfire greets you with an amicable gesture. He doesn't reach for his weapon or his threatening. All in all, his behavior is highly unusual for one of his kind. His clothes look quite unusual too. Not many kobolds opt for human clothing, nor do they adorn their possessions with spikes or scales. Kranook. Greetings, my name is Kranook. I'm all alone here, so you may safely come closer. He speaks smoothly, without the usual kobold hissing. Moving slightly aside, the kobold points in the carcass of a small animal on a stick roasting over the fire. Dinner will be ready soon. Kobolds are a rather courteous lot, it would seem. I never expected to receive an invitation to dinner from one of your kind, as a guest rather than a dish, that is. I didn't exactly invite you, Count. My invitation was addressed to the commander, but sit down, help yourself. Beyond the walls of your fancy mansion, you'll find surprises far more unusual than my humble self. How does he know that he's a count? I better kill you just in case. What do you want from me? I want nothing from you. I'm asking for nothing. I'm simply offering help. I sympathize with your cause, so I would like to provide whatever support I can from time to time. Does that work for you? What's the catch? No catch, I'm acting for wholly altruistic reasons, but my motives are something I would rather not reveal. Kranook turns his face to you and his wrinkles become more visible in the glow of the fire. We just met five minutes ago, don't you think it's too early to expect complete candor just yet? As I have already told you, I am a friend of the crusade. You can choose to trust me or you can leave. Uh, I haven't heard of any demons working with kobolds, so... Uh, Sure, we can always kill him later. Then we have a deal. You won't regret your decision. Just drop by my camp every now and then so we can have a word. Perhaps I'll be able to give you some useful tips. Pulling out a small knife, the traveler carefully cuts off two strips of meat from the roasted hare. He throws one into his toothy maw while graciously offering the other to you. A strange animal for sure, but it seems edible. The energies of the world won't mask everything in illusion. Harmless looking animals try to eat you for dinner. Dangerous paths appear to be straight roads, and your enemies, sometimes your enemies, can look like your friends. Kranook squints and looks deeply into your eyes. Have you ever been in a situation like this? First you think a person is your friend and ally, but then the scales fall from your eyes. And you realize they are actually your sworn enemy. So you catch this person, you tie them up, and then you start thinking, how should you treat them now? Like your enemy? Like your former friend? It's hard to decide. What will you do if one of your friends turned out to be a traitor? Uh, are you talking about someone specific? Every traitor must be executed. There's no other way. I will torture the traitor for days and then make him beg for mercy. Death is mercy. But are you talking about anyone in specific? This sounds like he has this from personal experience. Wow, your Christian reeks of paranoia. No, I'm not talking about anyone specific and I'm not implicating anyone. The kobold chuckles. I'm sorry. It seems my joke has spoiled your sleep for the next few nights. There are no spies along the crusaders. That's a lie. Every trade must be executed. There's no way. Duh. 
That sounded smooth as if you were reading it from an inquisitor scroll. What if you think with your own head instead of repeating slogans? Fine, let's assume you execute the traitor then what? The overall score is still in the demon's favor. Something in Kranuk's voice sounds merciless, like cold steel. If you catch a traitor, grab them and shake them till they spill everything they know. Some need to be tortured, others will crack if you threaten their family or bribe them with promises of mercy and gold. Wring the traitor dry like a rag mop and think about war, not about ethics. At least that's what smart people write in books. Uh, he has a point. The fervor fades from the kobold's voice, but subtle glints still flicker in his eyes. You got really worked up there. Who me? Not at all. You say that like you're an expert on Kobo, as if you can intuit our deepest feelings and emotions. I guess you're right. What matters most is doing what's best for the cause. The Kobo shakes his head, pretending not to care. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I was just sharing my opinion. Uh, you have a point. Then again, if we're discussing traitors, it's fortunate that betrayal is not reserved for mortals alone. Demons stab each other in the back for far more frequently. The rumor is that there are at least two demon stashes within Dresden, filled with arms and supplies that were stolen by Descarites from Baphomites, and vice versa. One of them is near the entrance to the fortress, while another one lies by the entrance to the citadel. Well, that is valuable. Of course it is. I wouldn't waste your time. Cracking his knuckles Kranuk gives you an inquisitive look i hope that when the time comes for you to make real decisions instead of hypothetical ones your wisdom won't fail you just one bad choice can turn a revered leader into a disgraced pariah i've seen it happen before i lived through something like that my tribe suffered a disaster caused by just one bad choice can you even imagine the kobo squints sadly his shoulders slumping a bit with a sigh, he begins to talk. I don't like telling this story, but it might be useful for you to know it. Perhaps it will serve as a warning. Tell me then. Kranuk clears his throat and starts talking in a sonorous voice that reveals his experience as a bard. I was born into the mighty and proud tribes of the Night Ruby. Our caves were vast, our mine shafts were rich in quartz and metal, and our underground lakes were brimming with fish, and of course we had plenty of slaves. The Night Ruby was a model of kobold success. It was a tight-knit, greedy, and aggressive tribe that intimidated even a few of the nearby human settlements. Okay, who were their slaves? Because they're small creatures. Now, don't un to underestimate creatures based on size. I understand that, especially with those Fescavore swarms. Dealing with them was annoying. But still, who, who were they enslaving? Gnomes or mites from, like, Kingmaker? But there was a flaw underlying our power. Once long ago, a leader of our tribe signed a pact with devils, promising them the soul of every tribe member in exchange for help and prosperity. Since then, every new Owl Watcher had to agree to the pact, and the power of the tribe grew, as did the number of lost souls. It was like that until our leader, Ermak, came to power. She was a principled and proud elder who didn't want to bend the knee to hell, so she refused to sign the pact, and all kinds of calamities befell our tribe. The tribe was attacked by its neighbors at the devil's instigation. Epidemics broke out, then our slaves rebelled. They came after their former masters in the dead of night. Our clutches of eggs were ravaged, our altars were desecrated, and our warriors were slain in their barrels. The slaves paid us in full for our cruelty and arrogance. They hunted us, chasing us down through the caves and mine shafts, level by level. When we were finally left alone, we had no idea where we were. All we saw around us was darkness, and lurking in that darkness were bloodthirsty and dangerous predators. After raising his voice dramatically, Kranuk suddenly stops. Then he adds with a t teasing smile, I think this moment is enough of a click finger to stop there. Uh, I'd like to know more about you. How exactly can you help me? He, he helped me giving that information. I'd like to hear the story of your travels. Have you heard about my unusual powers? Uh... Sure. I've heard you're either extremely lucky or quite the opposite. You survived the massacre in Canabras, just to spearhead a new suicide mission. On the other hand, you survived then, and most likely you will survive now. Good luck in this noble endeavor. Okay. Time to go. Okay, now we're in Heaven's Edge. So I'm going to go with my mage armor and my false life. And it looks like it's party time, so 
they have separated us from our party members. Oh, it's everyone's here. I probably didn't need to buff myself. Uh, he just gives off and everything he does and says like wealth and opulence and uh, I don't want to say snotty because that's a it's like it's such a childish word but just a spoiled brat uh, I probably won't say spoiled brat but very not down to earth And what are these uh, prostit? Uh, I don't want to say prostit. The strippers. Why are these strippers still here? Oh, that's the decision he decided to make. Not avoid sin. He chose the one that just lets him. He just decides to commit as much. So you could go on the other end and run away for it. Or you can just embrace it. But that's how you pronounce it. Abri, Abri Kandelu. Kandilu. Darren Smirks finishes his wine and tosses the glass. That's the difference between something being a vice and something being a sin. Because originally what we think of as the seven deadly sins were originally called the seven deadly vices. And going to that excess creates sin. Uh, I think, I don't know where I read it from, but they say the word sin in its original language i don't know if it's a greek or whatever it might be greek means to miss the mark meaning to you either went too far to the left or too far to the right so drinking and enjoying yourself i don't think that's gonna turn them into or i don't think that's considered sin uh leo to hawk blade how interesting inquisitor leo whispers in your ear from behind did you find anything interesting nothing really i just took note of a few things i attempted to find out whether anything unusual or mysterious has happened to the count over the last 10 years during my conversations with his acquaintances two people noted that he never speaks of the revered nestron the priest of Ayamade, who was his guardian and tutor yet he just mentioned nestron in his speech whatever that might mean Tell me what you tried to find out if anything odd has happened to Darren over the last 10 years. Some of his servants complained about the strange occurrences in the house, like objects moving by themselves or candles going out. Of course, that could simply be a figment of their imagination. It is also very well known that the Count often invites various spellcasters to entertain him and encourages them to use their magic in mischievous ways. Practically, the whole of Mendev knows a story about the three drunk wizards and their teleportation race across the roofs of Canabra after a party at the Count's house. What I'm trying to say here is that any fluctuations in residual magic at his house are not at all surprising. 
There was the matter of the abduction, however. A gang of bandits kidnapped the Count hoping for a ransom, but the only reward they got was death. Afterward, the Count told everyone that he had hired the bandits himself as a joke. The other mercenary squad that freed him and executed the bandits was also in his employ. What? Nobody really wanted to delve too deep into this case after confirming the identities of those wretched cutthroats, but there was one disturbing fact about it all, and I don't mean the Count's bizarre idea of fun. The mercenaries who supposedly freed him had also cut off the bandits' heads after they had already killed them. Why? Well, that's very interesting. So now it's time. Now we're not playing a role-playing game. We're playing a detective game. Their heads were cut off. You mean the bandits who attacked Dresden? Or oh, Darren. Yes, perhaps I wouldn't have even noticed this detail had I not visited Heaven's Edge right after the tragic incident. I remember that we also found several headless bodies, both of guests and demons. We thought they had been decapitated during the fight. Interesting, interesting. Now, did they, did anyone see these uh, mercenaries? If no one saw the mercenaries, I'm pretty sure it was him and his powers. My companions have been finding severed heads among their belongings recently. Strangely, things like this weren't a problem before Darren joined the party. Oh, that's where that severed head came from? What? This is an alarming coincidence. Now we have another reason to conduct an investigation. It is crucial that we find out what exactly happened at the tragic feast. What do we need to do, Quizzer? Now that's the hardest part. I need to dive deep into the past of this place, which requires casting several different spells over some time. It would be very convenient for me if nobody interrupted the process, especially the Count himself. I don't think he remembers my face, but a suspicious stranger casting unknown spells might attract his attention. All in all, what I want you to do is to distract the master of the house. Right now he is playing host in the very place I like to start with. Okay, so how do I distract him? I don't know. Maybe your companions can assist you somehow, or you can take a look around. Perhaps there's something that can help us. Good luck. Come back to me when the count leaves. I will tell you everything I managed to find out, and maybe even show you something. Okay. The Inquisitor wants to conduct his investigation discreetly. The commander needs to find a way to distract the count, as he might stand in the altar's way. Ah, I do this the old-fashioned way. So I've somehow landed at the party of a royal. Go figure. And that's Sela. What is Sela wearing? She's supposed to be wearing her armor at all times. She is definitely not Valerie. Valerie will definitely wear all her armor. Count Arendelle's servant. Take that. A jug of wine, if used, created may distract the count for a while. There's Ninio. Question is, where is he? It seems there is a hidden cache inside the wall. You can see a keyhole among the decorations. When my perception score is not good. Oh, there's quite things in here. And great bracers. Di all this diamond dust. We are rich. We are rich. Now we won't have any problem recruiting people. We are rich. I didn't think the game would give us so much money. <laughs> because I was think I know it's a high powered game because of the demon stuff and the mythic stuff. But at least it's not like uh, the Through the Ashes DLC where it was just weak, being weak, 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 despair, despair, despair. There's Rachel. The stake could be remade into a formidable defensive outpost. It should be expropriated for the sake of the war effort and the owners compensated after victory is secured. I like that. It should be turned into a fortress, but, you know, private property and all that stuff. There are occasional traces of older matrons, tree, and 
foundations. It looks like the building was reconstructed several times. Okay, I still need to find out where exactly am I supposed to go. I did get some money. Some very much needed funds. Okay, let's go in here. The door is sealed and looks like it hasn't been opened in a very long time. So no, no, no. Click. Okay, we're getting quite the nice stuff. I hope we get find more stuff. Cause I need more money. The door is sealed and looks like... Then where is he? No, I guess I can't go that far. Okay, so whenever I find out where he is, oh, there he is right there. Uh, so I can just have him leave. Darren, let's talk. Darren, who has been watching the guest with an unreliable expression, turns his head to you and says in a casual tone, like he's continuing a conversation that was interrupted. I've always considered myself an estate. Not a hero. When doomsday comes, I thought I'd pour myself a glass of a hundred-year-old wine, sit in the front row, and just watch the world burn. Playing the violin was also an option. Now I'll be damned. If I don't, if I know how I ended up in the Fifth Crusade, how did I become the companion of a hero chosen by Amade? It was our destiny to end up together. Yes, it was, because you are very useful. Perhaps this year tends to finally do something worthwhile. Sometimes the most casual occurrences dictate of Darren snorts and averts his eyes for a moment. Oh, do go on, of course. Uh, tell me more about Heaven's Edge. This estate was once a truly beautiful sight with its lush gardens and placid ponds. Darren smiles briefly. It is a genuine smile, quite different from his usual half-smirk. The house itself is not that large, however. This land was part of the border region even before the world wound, so my ancestors took that into account when laying the foundations. The larger the mansion, the harder it is to defend. Okay. Activate the fire suppression systems to distract the count. I gladly give you a tour, but I'm afraid there's not much to see here. I didn't have much time, so my servants only managed to clean up this yard, the great hall, and a couple of rooms. There's nothing interesting about them except perhaps the magical firefighting system powered by rod or elementals. I'm not sure it's still functional, though. Field attache and plenipotentiary, ahem, <laughs> something. Count, I demand a report of all your work so far in half an hour. Spill wine on there in suit. Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, that's lame. So why did you really decide to throw a party at the scene of such a tragedy? What's this ghoulish farce all about? Darren freezes. What an odd feeling. It's like I had been lying under the sun in a spectacular meadow in full bloom. And then you barge in to pour a bucket of ice cold water all over me. Is this how you treat people who invite you to their celebration? No, you don't have to answer. I could come up with a polite excuse, but I'd rather match your courteous manners and put it bluntly. I do not wish to continue this conversation. Thank you for ruining my mood. I shall retire to my chambers for a time. And I return to Leah to her. Return to Leo to continue the investigation and activate Jug of Wine. The Quizzer wants to conduct his investigation discreetly. The commander needs to find a way to distract the Count as he might stand in the altar's way. Okay, that that worked. Where does all where did all this loot come from? What happened to all the guests? And where's the older? Oh there he is. I always get the loot. Uh, I hate... Okay, perfect. Camera angles and all that. I see that you did your part, Commander. Thank you. Now get ready to watch and listen closely. I will unravel the past of this place and try to show you whatever I find. Distract Darren in the yard. Ooh, nice. The hum of voices, laughter. They really stepped the animations up uh, from Kingmaker. Countess Selena Arende. The hum of voices, laughter, and music fills your mind. 
Then the visions come, fragmented and hazy at first, before eventually coalescing to reveal a single face. It is a woman of stunning heavenly beauty, and her delicate features instantly tell you who she is. The family resemblance to Darren is obvious. My dear guest, the Lady of Heaven's Edge welcomes all of you today. I hope this day is as bright for you as it is for me, because on this day my only precious sometimes arrogant but utterly beloved child was born. A child is usually a reflection of their parents and caretakers. Countess, will you allow the humble tutor of this young man to address the guests and the man of the hour as well? A new face appears. It is a handsome old man with a strong, dignified posture and a voice that emanates power. Can we have just one day without your sermons? It's my birthday after all. Ten years ago, the young Darren had an utterly angelic appearance. His table manners and expression lacked the dignity of a true angel, however. Countess Selena Arenday. Day, I'm sure the revered, revered Nestron only wanted to hug you and offer you his best wishes on your birthday. Wait, what? what's that noise? Did he turn into um, smoke or ash? Did someone snap him away or what? We'll see. The shrill laughter rings in your ears and reverberates in the base of your skull, and the vision of Leto too appears before the guests of the estate and gives them an exaggerated scornful bow. The sorceress of evil has come to your celebration, mortals. Did you prepare a treat for me too? Plot twist. What do you want, Spawn of the Abyss? I've already done everything I wanted to. Hey you, daughter and cleric, look around. Don't you notice anything odd? The plague is in your wine, and your food, and the air around you, in your blood. Soon you will all die. Pray to your pathetic goddess and call upon your healing powers all you want, but they're not going to help you. Nothing will help you. I'll give you a chance to see it for yourselves, and when I return the grave realization will have already sunk its teeth into your throat. Oh, how I love watching mortals in their final desperate hours. The demon finishes her speech with an air kiss to Darren, making him freeze in horror, and disappears. Leto shakes his head and slowly exhales, rubbing his temples. The first appearance of the disease and the Lilitu, one of the many sisters of the accursed Monago. So far, everything I've seen matches the official version of events. I already know who were the people in the vision. Surely the cleric could have done something. I can't say for certain, but I believe there was nothing he could have done. Magical diseases are already difficult enough to cure, and this plague struck very fast indeed. Now we must find out what happened next. What now? I can sense the aftershocks of a very strong outburst of emotions and memories somewhere in the rest wing of the house. Something must have happened in one of the rooms. So please check if anyone is in there and distract them if need be. Okay, more tasks. Okay, another person to distract. I'm pretty sure it's Darren. Why is Wojif in this room? But it looks like everyone just moved to the house. So, I'm pretty sure... It has to be Darren. So I'm going to go in here. Darren arches a brow at you, but he doesn't seem to be disturbed in the slightest by your entrance. He's not trying to cover up or get dressed any faster. Commander, I assume that you have an urgent matter that requires. I'm absolutely confident that you won't be able to persuade Camilla to dance with you. I'm absolutely confident that you won't be able to persuade Sila. I'm absolutely confident that you won't be able to say Socio to draw a portrait of you, a new portrait that is. I want you to make a list of all the guests and ask them about their opinion of the crusade. This ta uh, I think you should return. I'm sorry for this. We'll come back here. Uh, what was the task? Lure Darren out of the room. The room, Darren. Oh, okay. So I thought, let's see what a Wolgif is doing. I just saw a portrait of Darren's mom, so she was an Asimar too, huh? Some people got, get a celestial bloodline, tons of money, and a title, while others get horns and a slap in the face. Yeah, life can be unfair that way. So he had an Asimar. So is he human or an Asimar? I can go into this. I thought he was human, but is he an Asimar? I think he is. He is an Asimar. Oh, that's nice. 
Okay, to get them out, I'm obviously going to go with... Sociel is good, right? No one cares about Camellia. Sila, uh, we have Azric, so Sociel. That sounds like a fine idea. A cleric will surely turn down a direct request, but if I tell him that we can tell the, sell the portrait at a charity auction, why well, ha have I never before thought of selling my nude portraits at a starting up OnlyFans within Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous? But now, why have I never before thought of selling my new porches at a charity auction? It will cause a huge scandal, but it will also be for a good cause. This will give those god bothered there's something to complain about. Hey, this was before pictures and all this stuff. So, I think it's okay. Like you have the Statue of David, right? You've given me a brilliant idea. I know, I'm just filled with brilliant ideas. Why is he wearing a, or is that his hair? Now, the character models are the only thing that needs to be improved. Well, there there's some can be some other improvements, but definitely need improvements in the character models. I see that you were able to do as I asked. Prepare yourself. The vision might be rather difficult to watch. Not for me. I'm interested. Young Darren stands motionless by the Countess's bed. His face is pale with fear and for good reason. His mother's heavenly beauty is gone. Her smile, once beaming with vitality and happiness, looks more like the grimace of a corpse. Only her golden hair still glows. A sad reminder of the healthy young mama she was just a few hours ago. Mother, can you hear me, mother? Day, my boy, how did you get here? The Countess's voice is fading. Don't come any closer, I. This disease... Mother, listen, the revered Nestron has sealed the gates. He says that he won't let anyone leave the estate. If the plague reaches the larger settlements, nobody will be able to stop it. He claims this is why the demons attacked us in the first place. They knew that they, that we would call upon the strongest clerics to heal us, and those clerics will catch the disease and die as well. The fat baron and his family tried to escape, but three armed paladins barred their way and said they would not let them go. Mother, we need help. Canabras is full of clerics, wizards, and demons. No, who else? They might know how to stop it. We need to get there as soon as possible. Nestrin actually made a very impressive decision. Like, he decided to sacrifice himself seeing as that there was no help. Instead of clinging on to some false hope. To protect the wider thing. I have newfound respect for Nestrin, even though I don't know who he is except for the cleric who taught Darren but okay we must obey the revered Nestrin we are the lords of Mendev and we must protect our people if the plague if it reaches Canabras thousands of innocent people will die and that's that's the job that's the job see that's why it happens when you have a noble who loses their parents too young they just get all the wealth and the opulence and they're not taught anything proper see she was good ah oh, she's a good woman good woman i don't care about any innocence darren's voice rises to a shout you're ill mother you you you're dying you must tell them to open the gates and take you to canabras they won't listen to me but you are the lady of the state they can't refuse you i i can't i must please leave my dearest don't lose hope you can still a convulsion overtakes the countess's body her last words are swallowed by a long guttural groan Leota rarely rubs his temples, but his face is unreadable. Now I have an answer to one of my many questions. Nobody went to Canabras in search of help because the revered Nestrin didn't let them. He valued the safety of the city more than the lives of his flock at the estate. Hey, hey, bro. Hey, bro. He did the right thing. Well, I wouldn't say right, but he did something I can't disrespect. Well, I could, but it deserves respect. I'm going to say that. What a difficult choice it must have been. He made the right choice. There was no other way. Good. All lives are equally valuable. How could he refuse to save them just because he thought some other people? How is this a good option? Bah humbug. Not good. Was there really no other choice? That's a good question. Who can say now? They could have sent one of the paladins to bring help from Canabras, assuming that the Knight of God was immune to the disease. Perhaps Nestor thought he might need them to make order or maybe he understood that the demons would not allow anyone to leave anyway or maybe the plague was so strong that it could mow down even the most righteous warriors we'll never know if any of these hypotheses are true 
Leota ropes his chin thoughtfully. I have never been in the revered Nestrin's position, but I know the price of difficult decisions, especially those that you have to make quickly. I have no right to judge him, but he must continue. we must continue our investigation. The next site I like to examine is the Great Hall. That is where we found the remains of Nestrin and the demons. I assume that he killed them in a confrontation, but we must make sure of that. Please help me clear the area so that I can study it. Occupy Darren's attention to I'm so glad I decided to inspect this because we need this. This backstory is good. I knew I was right for choosing Darren as one of Alpha Squad. Stop trying to talk me into this. You have neither heart nor conscience, Darren. Even the noble idea of charity becomes a farce when you <laughs> Ah, I love it. Both this place and its owners make me think how deceptive appearance can be, but I cannot deny that the wine here is very good. <laughs> will suffer from knowing that their money and medicine came from my sinful silly how do I kick everyone out Qu oh a cortison can I kill one how do I kill them I can't cast any spells while the count is around and I can't talk to the count oh he's oh I have to wait until he finished talking to Sociel. So Land, Drunk Noble, Ember. Ember, are you alright? There's so much food here. If I let Suit eat everything she wants, she'll become twice as fat and won't be it. Who, who is Soot? Is that a crow? Does she have a crow animal companion? C okay, Suit is right there. Aww, that's cute. She still got her negative levels. Which we'll probably cure later when we get someone. Uh, we do have Camellia. She can use Restoration. But I'm going to save that until I get it with Darren. And have him get Restoration. It'll probably be one of the first spells he get at 4th level. I'm pretty sure Restoration is a 4th level spell. But anyway, there is a feverish gleam to Darren's eyes. Owing to either tipsiness or some overabundance of emotion. Yeah, he's drunk. That water socio refused to sketch me in a nude for chair, <laughs> but it didn't upset me too much. The faces he made while I was explaining the idea to him were well worth it. He looked very much like a pious matron being confronted with a talking male organ, one that was two foot long and being held aloft by a pair of golden angel wings. How are you enjoying my party? Are you having a good time? Yeah, I'm having I'm having much more fun now. How about you? Are you having any fun? Yeah, I'm having the time of my life. At least someone here is having fun. Fine, let's change the subject. I thought the unique ambience of Heaven's Edge and the fact that we're on the very border with the world. Oh, now he can talk uh, properly. What make the celebration special? I thought the past would resurface and make itself known. Darren smirks bitterly. Well, it seems even ghosts don't wish to attend my parties anymore. What can we do to liven up the evening? Uh, you know what I think? I think it's time for a drinking contest. That's one way. I've just realized that I don't have a report on your career plans for the next three years. The more I observe you, the clearer it becomes that you're hiding something or trying to run away from something. I'm going to take a short stroll and be alone with my thoughts. Yeah, let's do a drinking contest. Ah, yes. The tried and trusted method for salvaging a dull party. For salvaging anything, actually. I'm ready, but who's my competition? Lan will be my champion in this contest. Yes, I'm ready. Let's see how this puffed up brat host is on against a kid from the caves with a cast iron stomach. Mongrel cooking will do that for you. Tell me, old kid from the caves, should I tuck you into bed on your right side or your left? I wish to be fully prepared for when you inevitably collapse under the table. Let's drink until one of us falls unconscious or begs for mercy. He has less arrestor. I don't think less restoration uh, gets rid of the sickness or inebriated i don't think they get the inebriated condition but if you can continuously heal yourself that was just a little warm-up i say up for more have you already thought about how you'll tell your post friends about this they'll be so happy to find out that you lost to a horrible scaly one-horned caveman they'll be green with envy that i got the chance to drink with a horrible scaly one-horned caveman and a dent try to come up with a better joke land next round I'm cheering for Darren. Go on, count. Show us what you got. Land is our champion. Victory to land. Uh, we're trying to get Darren. Uh, yeah, we're trying to get Darren drunk. That was unexpected. I thought everyone was against me. 
No, I'm for you getting drunk so you can get out of the place so I can get more backstory. It looks like he's getting drunker and drunker. Whoa, are we done here or are you ready for another round? Where's Lan at? Is that Lan? Why are you so upset? Your mightiness didn't expect this, huh? I do believe I'm seeing double. Oh wait, it's just your. <laughs> that's that's low. That's funny. <laughs> it's just your. Oh, he has to make the fortitude save now. Did he fail? My grandfather, or maybe my great grandmother, put this bottle in the family cellar. So I did it fail to scion of the illustrious Aaron days in this time of need. That's all the bottles they drank? The bottle didn't fail you, bro. Darren looks a bit unsteady on his feet. I don't feel very well. Hey, everyone. Let's go back outside. I need to get some fresh air in my lungs. I would not have succeeded that. Veronel is not a drinker. Azric, Azric would have done it. Azric would have succeeded. Azric's the drinker. Here we are again, Commander. Leotir uh, looks grim but focused, so let us take another glimpse into the past. Why over here? We have this whole hall, and you decide to choose a corner? Lily, too. A ripple of laughter flows through the hall. It begins as a sweet, charming chuckle, but then turns into a rasping cackle that makes Darren huddle even deeper into his corner. Why are you running from me, my sweet prince? Come on, let me touch you. I'll give you... Oh, there there it is. Looks like Monaco, too. So that's what Lilitus look like. So Monaco is a Lilitu. Interesting. The booming voice of an old man dressed in Ayamade and robe shakes the walls of the hall. Get away from him, demon. Let the boy go. By the blade of the inheritor, you touch him only over my dead body. You are pathetic, old cleric. Are you the guardians of this charming little prince? Well, you guarded him in vain. The disease is already circulating in his blood, and soon he will, not, he will rot before your very eyes. You won't be able to help him, and I, I can at least make sure his death is beautiful, clean, and sweet. The demoness turns her eyeless face to Darren and licks her lips. A coarse laugh escapes the young man's throat. We'll see about that. Leota turns toward you in astonishment. Droplets of sweat glisten on his temple. Something is wrong, Commander. My spells are not working as expected. It's as if some kind of supernatural explosion occurred here ten years ago, blending everything together. The magical auras, the emotions, the memories. I will try again to read it. Could it be? No one cares if it's dangerous. Please continue. Just give me a moment to focus. I will try to channel my visions and feelings to you as accurately as possible. Darren, my boy, what is going on? Leotir's muscular soldiers suddenly begin to shake. The vision he is channeling does not change, but you feel something enormous and chilling silently infiltrate the reality around you. The presence of this nameless being becomes almost palpable. Some alien entity is talking to him. Hurry, old cleric. Stop him right now. Do you really want to see what happens when... Save me. Can you save me? The presence thickens into something more tangible. The entity is silent, but you feel your blood pulsing in your temple. And each beat brings a new image, or rather a new notion. Help brings a feeling of relief and safety. Exchange makes the pulse stronger, more demanding. Gate and secret come immediately after. The images become heavy or almost visible. Secret, keep the secret, otherwise death, 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 death. The gruesome images whirl around your mind, filling it with pain and fear, and then it all starts again. Help, exchange, secret, death. But he's an oracle. Sounds like a witch to me. Nestrin stretches out his shaking hand, suddenly looking like a doddering old man instead of a mighty cleric imbued with holy power. Darren, wait, the thing you're about to let loose is even worse than these demons. Is it? Darren's body is quivering like a top bowstring. His eyes dart from the cleric to the demoness who is frantically casting protective spells. Demon saints, I'm so fed up with all of you. Burn. Oh, he killed everyone. Is he dead? 
Yoder opens his eyes with a groan, then gets back on his feet. His legs are wobbly, his eyebrows is cut, but he seems not to notice. Sincere sorrow is written on his face, as well as a strong hint of horror. What is Emma's fortune? No, what a disaster. Everything is far worse than I imagined. Are you alright? The strain, the motions, they overwhelmed me and made me faint like an agitated youngster. It is nothing, really. I will not be able to cast any spells for the rest of the day, but aside from that, I'm fine. Do you understand now what happened ten years ago? The Inquisitor slowly exhales through clenched teeth and says in a low voice, still massaging his temples. Yes and no. Damn it, my thought are astray. I will try to explain everything to you in full detail. Many living things are capable of performing the most extraordinary feats, good or bad. When a deadly threat looms over them ten years ago, the young Count found himself cornered in every sense of the word, and he allowed some alien entity to intercede for him. It frightens me that all my experience as an Inquisitor is completely useless in this case. It does not resemble anything I've ever heard or read about. This entity, I think I will call it the Other, possesses uncanny, uncanny power. It was capable of instantly killing three greater demons, a mighty cleric, and a host of other mortals. You saw everything yourself. What's even worse is that this entity, this Other, is still here. Leoter takes a long pause. His gaze is drawn to the chamber where all the guests are laughing and dancing. Darren's eloquent voice rises above the music for a moment. He's asking someone to bring more wine and add more logs to the fire. I don't know what exactly this creature is, but I know what it did to the Count. It turned him into a living gateway. The other is not inside the Count's body. It's not directly controlling his mind. That's why there are no obvious signs of possession. But it is looking through his eyes. It treats him like a window into our world and can instantly step through it to wreak whatever havoc desires. Does Darren know anything about all this? Yes, of course he does. Did you hear what the other tried to convey to us? Help in exchange for a secret, death, death to those who know the truth. He wants to have an opportunity to use the count as a gateway without anyone knowing. That is what made Darren deny that he remembered anything about the conclusion of the events at Heaven's Edge. Or might the other one? This is the strangest thing about it all. It came to this world 10 years ago and it's still here, right? All this time it has been watching us through the eyes of the Count. Had it, for instance, wanted to kill Her Majesty the Queen, it would have had plenty of opportunities to do so. The Count can get close to practically every influential figure in Medea, but the other refuses to act or its interests lie in some other ship. Probably he is, uh, out of... An, He's not of this world, so his motivations are probably not as simple as that. Did the other kill everyone then? The disease is not to blame. Uh, the disease would have killed him. Not everyone, just Nestrin, his paladins, and the few remaining guests. Damn it. I know that it was the work of a mysterious, omnipotent entity, but it still stings. I was here ten years ago, and I didn't check everything personally, and those who did failed to sense that something was wrong. Could the other be the reason why my companions kept finding severed heads among their belongings back in Canabra? It seems very likely. I'm almost certain you are right. People tend to lose their heads when they get too close to Count Arendate anyway. Huh. I do apologize. That was inappropriate. Perhaps your gruesome findings are the heads of some cultists who tried to kidnap the Count during the Canabra slaughter. Or perhaps they provoked the other in some other way. We have to do something. Nah, not really. Yes, now I understand Father Nestrin perfectly. I must make a crucial decision despite a dearth of information. The Inquisitor falls silent for a while, then he looks you right in the eye. Commander, first and foremost, I must apologize to you. Second, I must ask you to keep this secret. What are you so sorry for? I apologize for dragging you into this mess. You are... You No, you see, the other entity of immense power stated very clearly that it would kill anyone who found out the truth. Anyone who knows that the Count is actually its living gateway. I suppose the secret is currently known to three people on Galarian, you, me, and Count Darren. And that means, the other gives you a crooked smile and shrugs, why should I keep it a secret? As soon as the Count finds out that we know his secret, the other will understand it as well. We do not know what it is and what exactly is the scope of its powers, but we do know that if it would dispose of anyone who might reveal its existence. So is this going to be like a final boss fight towards the end of the game? Because right now, we can, if it was able to kill a great, all these greater demons, we can't fight it now. But it will be great. Like, um, these people were home brewing this epic legacy thing, which took the game past the 20th level. This was for D&D &D 5th edition.
tabletop rpg and there was some epic fights in that if you haven't checked out epic legacy it's been a while since i've checked it out i would like to explore it uh i am working i'm not going to talk about what i'm working on right now because i have to do other things and i still have to release that other video <sighs> things to do I made a decision, Leo Trigger says gravely. I will not tell anyone about the discovery we've just made, not even the queen or mob superiors. Instead, I will immediately go to Nerosian and sift through all the archives of the Inquisition in order to find out what exactly we are dealing with and how it can possibly defe be defeated. I may also make some cautious inquiries in other places, including Absalon. Still, I will not reveal the truth until I was have found at least some reliable information. I'm asking you to do the same. Specifically, do not say a single word about our investigation to the Count himself. So you want me to lead the crusade while carrying a bomb that may explode at any moment? <laughs> what are you going to do with Darren himself? At the very least, he is guilty of letting the other enter our world. Uh, I'm okay with it. Fine, I'll keep it. Uh, I cannot promise you anything. It's your choice, Commander. Just let me remind you again. Be careful. I recommend that you go back to the guests and spend the rest of the evening as you please. Anything else might raise suspicion. I must leave immediately in search of the knowledge we all need so desperately. Farewell, Commander. May the light of Iomade guide your path. Feeling your Hawk Bay will try to keep your path to triumph clear of any unwanted guests. I am so glad. My favorite mission so far. That was wonderful. So let's get back to the guess let's see if we can find darren i don't know if my opinion wait pause can we i guess we can leave because we finished i guess we can just leave the area right because we don't have to talk uh take the stuff leave the area and find out what we can do okay we didn't have to wait long to do the crusader fight because after just one day of resting we didn't do anything differently uh because there is not much to go through we have to go through this area and find if anything's out there because i'm not ready to fight dressin yet uh even though we could march on dressin but i definitely want to defeat this demon army first so i'll probably march on dressin now but now i have an army that can at least finish wrapping these guys up so i'm gonna fight with this army finish them all up because i think this army could take them even though it does need to be stronger. But they only have two stacks. so And we have some clerics. So we'll finish them up for. Our, or we might have. Should have brought some hell knights. Okay. So now we have footmen. This might. We might have needed. I don't know how this is going to affect. Okay, we lost six. Okay, we lost nine total. Not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. We just continue to take them out. We still we still need more of these. I might I might have to say bye to them. We're going to have to wait before we get into any more serious battles. We're going to need some more clerics. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Okay, they're dead. S 16 to 36. Those, that's fine. 2 to 14. I'm still going to use my heal so they can at least do some damage i wonder if i could uh all units in army gain plus five and a minus two penalty to initiative against ranged attacks uh, that's not going to help me and this one doesn't have damage reductions i'm going to definitely need true strike later on but i'm just going to keep on healing this to draw attacks. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, that's gonna do if I ever do attack my last heal. But we should be able to kill them. At least if they die, I can replace them with Hell Knights. So it'll be fine. And then hopefully by that time, I still have a strong army. Okay, they're dead. Oh, but they they are gonna revive thanks to our infirmary. So that that's good. Okay, they're, they're down. I will never underestimate the enemies ever again because after that last battle that cost us a lot and when we didn't finish them all, I should have waited. Die. Die. And that should increase our morale even further. I got everyone back, so I don't have to replace them with uh, Hell Knights. Whoop, I don't get to replace them. Grass the art of strategy and soldiers find the loss really great. After driving away a swarm of demonic flies, the Crusaders discovered the remains of an unfortunate group of Mendavian Knights. Their leader had a baldric with an emblem recognized by one of the soldiers. It was the crest of the infamous fallen knight, Melander Lens. So, Melander Lens was one of the most notable. I wonder if that, I probably can have the storyteller looks at that. And then we have a breastplate, which is good. So, we can move this army. So, now we can start moving forward. Uh, I still want to fight that demon army, but we're not strong enough yet. Eventually, we're going to move to a point where we can deal with them. I need more Hell Knights, but we'll get to it. I can't fight any demons right now. So, they're just going to have to sit right there. So, I, since we finished everything, I'm going to march on Dresden. Uh, if I can get to it, Dresden's over here. So I might be able to get to Dresden if I go this way. I failed to sneak past the enemies to prepare the fight. And then if we get to Dresden, we'll be good. More or less. What in the world is that? That is too high level, bro. Level 14, 26 AC. Rage, reckless stance, and there's some ghoul, ghouls too. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna fight it. Yeah, burn it down. How how strong are these? Ah, this is level ten. That's crazy. What is their reflex? Reflex plus seven. Reflex plus seven. Uh, let's see if we can grease. Great. We'll keep them. We'll keep that one right there. Uh, I'm still gonna five foot step. Uh, use my key power extra attack on this thing. That's gonna give us plus twelve to hit. We might. We might still miss, but we have to kill this one because this is gonna do a lot of damage. Okay, great. Now, how much damage can this one do? Undead, undead creature, acid reduction, damage reduction, ten cold iron, which is un, which is annoying. It just does four to eleven damage, which is not bad. Critical hit, that's good. Darren, obviously, we're gonna bless. That can stay down. Good. Uh, I will haste. Uh, and of course, I'm going to get my bonus to attack rows. And then get in there. Good.
burn, 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 burn. Okay. Move right here. Use my light of the heavens. Good. Good, it fell down. Perfect. So now I just have to get rid of that. Uh, these are evil outsiders, so evil communal. Oh, he got out on his own. Perfect. So, five foot step. Um, hideous laughter is not going to work on it, I don't think. Stun, death, petrified, charm, Jane, convulsion. Uh, spell to scriptures, mind affecting compulsion. That's not going to work. Uh, oh, yeah, we're just going to enlarge. Azric, so now he's doing more damage. Good. I don't know why he can't attack. He probably can still attack. Perfect. Yeah, we're we're in enemies are strong territory. But it's still alright. It's still alright. Okay, so we can exit the area now. Let me make sure there's nothing else. <laughs> but we're close to Dresden. And then we can crush all who oppose me. Uh, this is taking us way past Dresden. So I'm assuming Dresden is this way. But we might not be able to do it because of the fort. The fort might be the one to block us. They do have a lot of enemies. So we're probably going to have to wait. So I'm getting away to Okay, more enemies to right. What in the world is that? Gibberleth? How much damage does it do? What's its AC? Okay, let's AC. Tumors are annoying. Stinking ah, I hate stinking cloud. Damage reduction ten, except for good. That's gonna also be annoying. Okay, and then I have a succubus here. Ah, two succubi. Get wrecked. Uh, all these succubi. That's annoying. What the? What in the world was that? I'm going to get protection from evil first. I would love to get blessed, but we need the protection from evil communal. Okay. Kill the succubi, and then we'll kill that thing later. That thing is going to have to wait. What is it, 28 AC? That's ridiculous. Missing is not good. Okay, now we need a haste. Uh, we'll have him cast haste, Varanel, which is myself. Uh, I am going to enlarge Azric so he can do more damage. This is where we need quicken spell. Oh, I should. I should have used my first start. Let her do haste, and then use myself ah luna is down I, I don't know how she got knocked down by the succubus i'm not gonna get up because that's gonna use this is gonna use i did way too much damage i didn't even check to see. 4 to 11 9 to 14 and it can do three of those attacks with the gibber left whip dominate person doesn't work dominate person doesn't work duh Justice on the attack rolls. Okay. Good. Get wrecked. Did Erlis go down? Okay. This time I'm going to have to... Let me pray before I bless. We can We can bless next. Okay, this one's still one 
Still has 28. 5, 5. I still need to kill these. Okay. Let's see if we can attack it. It does have immunity to prone, I bet, because it's flying. It's 28 AC versus my 14. I, I still need to crush that one. But until that comes to the fray, I won't have to deal with it. Uh, if our heroism, Azric. Okay, th this is where we summon our trusty tanker spirit. And this is just from a random encounter, so... That's another level of stuff. My AC is 19. Prayer, haste. Is that without my mage armor? I got ring of protection. Yeah. Oh, good hits. Stop hitting me, you whore. Okay, I can't. He's probably going to do... Actually, he's not because he doesn't have enough damage. Honestly. And and he missed to start off with. Good. See, that's, that's something to kill. These are things to kill. But I need to... The Lilin and Zada will do. That's... Okay, so at least she's not dead. Uh, she's down. Luna is down too. Luna's not dead, right? Ah, Luna's dead. Okay. We'll bring Luna back. Uh, well, after we rest. Okay, let's try to... We have Midnight Bolts, but I don't think we need to use Midnight Bolt right now. I just need to keep on hitting. Uh, probably, probably keep on boost boosting attacks and stuff like that. Like do a heroism spell on land. That should do. I have a bow, and I do need to kill this last one. Uh, false life and all that stuff that could work. I definitely need a reduced person. Those those hits are annoying. Wonderful critical hit. Who does he think he is? Just whipping my. Did she die? How did she? Ah, oh, from the acid. I should have healed her. Now I have to bring her back. I'm gonna bring her back now during during this battle. Like just being in this area is dangerous. That's crazy. But we have what we need to bring them back. And they do cost money, and we did spend a lot of money. Luckily, we have two more raised dead dead scrolls. So get returned. Where is she? Serafina. Where did she go? I hope she just didn't disappear. I want to know exactly where is her character. Okay, she's right there. Perfect. I'm definitely going to have to rest after this. Uh, heroism on slowest might work. I want a mirror image while I can. Ha <laughs> ha. Go, Lila Nazara. Finish them off for me. Uh, can I even hit? I have plus 12 to hit. But I think I need a buff in case it decides to come after me. Okay. I'm going to mirror image. J just because I don't want to get hit. Grow claws, nothing else. Let's let us make its move. It must have got lucky uh, with those original attacks. Uh, restoration. 
Where is she? There she is. Why didn't it work? Oh, now I can't move? Okay. I'm gonna heal everyone. Get wrecked. Okay, now after I heal, then we'll be good. We captured this mysterious elf who tried to teleport away from us. Who is this? Looks like a spy to me. Not my first time seeing her in the camp. Just snoops around asking the soldiers this and that. And if you try to tell her, she just darts behind a tent and then she's nowhere to be seen. I've been hanging around here for hours. Looking all bored, waiting for her to bite, and she did. Started asking her questions, and then you came by right on cue. With an unnerving smile. Wait, where is it? Alright. Anyway, alright, we're gonna make you talk now, darling. Who do you work for? You won't escape this time. Who are you and why are you hiding your face? You hear a heavy sigh coming from under the shawl. Fine, you got me. We'll talk, but not here. Leave me somewhere away from prying eyes. She's all yours, Commander. I called her. I handed her over. And now, as they say, I wash my hands of the whole affair. Mr. Herself, what do you want from me, soldier? In an exasperated gesture, she rips the half mask off her face, and you see her black skin and crimson eyes. It's Kalesa, the elf you met in Canabras. Don't call me soldier. I'm the commander of the crusade. Everyone's a soldier in a war, generals and privates alike. I look at you and I see someone whose life is war and only war. That makes you a soldier. Whatever. I know who you are. You're Kalesa, a cultist of Discari. That's a lie. Her crimson eyes flash and she says firmly, I loathe demons and I'll kill any I come across. Take a closer look at the elf. She's clearly holding something back, but she doesn't appear to be lying either. Whatever it is, she thinking... Her claim that she hates demons sounds quite convincing. You're not lying, but you're not telling the whole truth. Why would foreign slander you? Kalesa's grim expression hardens further, as bleak and unflinching as the words on a tombstone. You're asking questions that are dangerous in and of themselves. I urge you to stop. The more you know about me, the higher the chances that a traitor's dagger will find its way into your back. You're not lying, but you're not telling me the whole truth. What was I supposed to pour my heart out? She looks at you defiantly. You have your war, soldier. I have mine. You're fighting chaos and madness. And I, I'm fighting lies and hypocrisy. But we are both willing to die for our cause, aren't we? I believe you. Foreign is in the camp. Watch out for him. With a crooked smirk, Kalissa says grimly, he's the one who, sh you sh who should watch out for me. Okay, well, that ends that. Now we wait because we're going to have to leave and we need to recruit more units. So we can't just, because I, even though I can't trust the computer. In fact, we're going to go to it so I can point this out. Because I don't trust them. Keep Alpha Squad. Uh, I would buy another Raised Dead Potion, but a uh, Raised Dead Scroll, but uh, really those things are expensive. Okay, so here's the thing. Go on a crusade map. We need to fight this demon army. I switched out, but since I only have four more left of them, I put it in this army. In fact, this army can go back and stay there. I have this army. They're saying this is green and I could fight it. That's not going to happen. I'm still not going to fight it. That's still red. Because the way I see it is their army is still too, too strong. We'll still get 1,500 finance points but the army's still too strong they have 107 cultists the ghouls by themselves are going to be annoying to fight because they have the disease paralyzing attack that's going to reduce damage and then not only that they have these cultist fighters that do 6 to 13 damage which decent amount of health and everything so i don't have nearly enough probably another round will be good uh, I do have, how many of these are there? Probably have to see. Because that, oh yeah, only 26. I don't have nearly. Like if you add up all these together, that's less. That's less than 
one stack of their army. I can't fight that. Uh, not yet, at least. After another round, we'll do it. But I'm going to start off. But anyway, I'm going to do this battle because we're going to have to do this battle, do this battle, and do this battle, and then fight and go to Dresden. Uh, but until then, I'm just going. I'm going to do this battle, then probably do that battle uh, because it's weaker. It's like a weak army and it'll give us some experience so i'm going to keep him even though i should have chose a spellcaster as a general but that will come later on so in the next episode we are going to fight Dresden. so i'll do this off camera so anyway thanks for watching